Hi, boys and girls. So we're going to explore plants today. There are so many different types of conifer trees. We think of them as pine trees in everyday life, but conifers are the types of trees that have needles rather than leaves, the way we think of leaves. The spruce are one of my favorites. They're most like the boughs of a traditional Christmas tree. This one over here is a juniper. It'll get these little tiny uh, purple berries on it. But in fact, these little berries are actually juniper cones. They're the tree's version of a pine cone. Two of the most popular in Big Bear are the Ponderosa and the Jeffreys. And you know it's a Jeffrey, even though the Jeffrey and the Ponderosa look almost exactly alike. You can look at their pine cones to tell, but the Jeffrey has something special. The Jeffrey smells like butterscotch. And if you go super, super close to the trunk and take a big, big, strong smell, you can literally smell the smell of butterscotch. Butterscotch. It truly smells like butterscotch, you guys. I didn't believe it when I first read about this, but it really does. I wish you could just come right here and smell the sweetness of butterscotch. One of the things that's really great about a cut log is that you can see the ring so clearly and you can actually count how old a tree is based on how many rings. Now, what these rings are, are actually old decaying xylem. All of these are rings of xylem. And then here, the bark that's left over is the old decaying phloem. We'll talk more about what xylem and phloem actually are as we study vascular plants. When you're exploring a plant, it's really fun if you can actually see the root system. So check with your family if there's a plant that they don't mind you really taking apart. Gently brush away at the soil. They look like tiny little threads. Their job is to absorb the moisture from the soil and also the nutrients that the soil has to provide, all the minerals and vitamins that are in the soil. Going up, I see evidence of the leaves. And if I'm dissecting a plant, I might even want to take leaves off and really look closely at the veins. Dissecting the flower is really fun. You can pull off petal by petal. I'm going to release the seeds. I find that just squeezing and they just start falling right out. Identify what part is what and label them in your science notebook. Now that we've explored the basic parts of the plant, let's go out into the forest and we're going to start looking closer inside the plant at the xylem and the phloem. The job of the xylem is to send the water from the soil and the roots all the way up to the entire plant moving upward only, and then the phloem actually can move every which way, every direction, getting the glucose um, to every single part of the plant, up and down and all around. The xylem and the phloem are in all vascular plants. So even these flowers here, the xylem's job is to pull up the water and the nutrients from the soil through the roots, up, 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 up the stem to all the leaves, and all the flowers and the petals. And in the meantime, the phloem can move every direction. It's taking the glucose that was made by the leaves during photosynthesis and sending that food throughout the plant so that the seeds, the flowers, the petals, every part of the plant gets the nutrition that it needs from the glucose. This is a freshly cut trunk. The tree fell and so they had to cut it to clear the road. And one of the things that's so great about this is you can actually see the sap still along the phloem area of the xylem and the phloem. So all the rings are the xylem and the xylem's what's sucking up the water and the nutrients from the roots. But the phloem, which is the outer rims where the bark uh, of the trunk is, is actually what sends the glucose, that nice sticky sugar from the photosynthesis in the leaves back down through the tree and down into the root system so that the roots get energy from the glucose. And you can still see the glucose in the phloem. So a simple activity you can do to really see how the xylem is actively pulling the water up from the roots to reach the petals is create a little vase, color it with some food coloring, 
I'm gonna make mine a little darker so it has a really good chance of working. I wanna choose a flower that is white, ideally a white flower, and you can maybe find this in a garden right in your yard. I happen to have these beautiful daffodils growing all over the yard right now. So I'm also gonna set up a daffodil. I've never tried with this, but I did see like, ooh, I've got white petals. Or if you happen to be making a grocery store run, already cut flowers are okay as well. I have this plant here, so I'm gonna cut off a nice stem. I'm gonna actually trim the leaves and any other flowers that are on the stem so that it has a better chance of getting up to the top. Make sure that the petals don't touch the red because I wanna be certain that it is the water being pulled up by the xylem in the stem rather than that I got the red dye on the petals on accident. Next, you just leave it and wait, and we're gonna check in a few hours and tomorrow morning and see how it goes. If you can't get a hold of any flowers to do this experiment, celery is actually an excellent way to do this experiment. So you just cut the celery, you leave it in the dyed water for uh, overnight, and the next day you should see pink in the leaves and you can even cut the stem and you can actually see the liquid through the xylem um, tubes. Let's go check our flowers. If the xylem worked properly, it should have pulled the water up the stem to the petals, turning our petals pink. Ah, there they are, they did. For mine, it took overnight to see, but I can see the pink in the petals really clearly and you can actually see the lines of the xylem in the petal itself. Today, we've learned about the xylem and how it pulls up the water and nutrients from the soil up the stem or the trunk to the rest of the plant. We learned about the phloem, which carries the food, which is the glucose from photosynthesis, all over the plant so every part of the plant gets the energy that it needs to grow and survive. And I have one last little fact to share with you about the xylem in a tree trunk. The reason we can count how old a tree is from the rings in the tree trunk is that xylem tissue lives for exactly one year. So each ring of xylem represents one year of the tree's growth. Isn't that cool? Butterscotch. It's a Jeffrey.